Ain't nothing like a Saturday morning. What's going on, everybody? It's freezing outside. Trying to, try to defrost the old windows. And my truck got rummaged through last night. I forgot to lock it. Boy, I swear, if I ever, ever catch a motherfucker going through my truck, ah, boy, I might try to hold court in the street for reals. But anyways, let me start this off a little bit different this morning. Uh, man, the comment section on these videos has been going in on me. A lot of jokes about everything is Matt's fault. Oh, if Joe doesn't finish the house, it's Matt's fault. Look, um, we're getting there. That's all I can say. It's Saturday morning as I begin this. I'll try to be more upbeat and positive about things. I know I've been, you know, bitching, but sorry. When you do this type of stuff, you're gonna get kind of stressed out. You're gonna, you're gonna bitch when things don't work out. I mean, especially when you've got so much on the line like I do but neither here nor there we're gonna make today a positive day so what's the game plan I'm gonna go ahead and shut my glove box that's crazy painting definitely today some work on the bathroom definitely today the downstairs bathroom at some point this afternoon I'll go pick up the tile that's ready from the other location uh, I'll have that Sunday I'll start doing the tile on the tub surround upstairs bathroom we'll get to that we're gonna get a lot of paint done upstairs today got some sanding that still has to get done mostly just in the dining room just a little bit of touch-up stuff that we've seen with the primer paint sometimes I've been told it's a good idea to do a coat of primer so that you can see any left imperfections that need to be addressed or maybe something that you forgot to hit when you were sanding and we've seen just very minor things in relation to all of that. I gotta go to Lowe's this morning, I gotta pick up a tool. There was something else that I needed, just a small tool. Can't remember what the other thing is. I'll figure that out. Damon's ready, he's available. So it's gonna be him and I to the finish line and all of you as well. And again, we'll try to make this more positive and less bitching. You guys are right on a lot of, uh, on a lot of accounts. I wanna make sure that I clarify that. You know, hey, look, I've hired guys off of Craigslist. What, have, what, have, what can I expect? Um, oh, wow. I thought the truck was going to blow up. It was a diesel just blowing out the, the black smoke. Um, you know, I've got no sort of management or um, people skills. It, you know, okay. I, I'll wear those things. You're right. Um, but we're almost there, folks. And it's been a little bit of a cluster. But we're almost there and that's the important thing so let's make today all it can be and i look forward to sharing with you guys what we got going on when we got it going on happy saturday y'all tomorrow's halloween i'm already almost in costume somebody said joe if you don't dress up like bob Billy, you're missing the mark ain't that the damn truth all right let's make today the best day that we possibly can All right, hey, a little bit after nine o'clock in the morning Saturday, and you can see it, we're already starting to prime the dining room. So we were in here first thing this morning, sanding the bejesus out of this thing. Uh, there was only a little bit more that needed to be sanded. We got that, we got this whole room cleaned up, and now we're priming. We're gonna get to some wall paint, some actual wall color paint upstairs today. Hopefully we're gonna get to that. A little bit more priming to do. We're gonna get to the bathroom. We're gonna put the vanity in the bathroom uh, this morning as well. And a little bit of work upstairs on that bathroom. I uh, brought the headpiece so you guys can now work with me. How about that? Make it a little better, a little POV action, right? All right, good deal. So now you guys can actually see my painting technique. It's phenomenal. I learned from the best, Bob Ross and I wish, oh gosh, I wish y'all could be a fly on the wall to see what this joint looks like on my head. Whoo, get our roller on there real good. Oh shoot, did I just put a ding in the wall? So the question that I posed for you for the day is, is it more cost effective to roll paint 
or to spray paint? Is it more cost effective to roll your paint or to spray it? Well, when you spray it, here's the first part of that. You know, that's a lot of prep work that goes into it. Prep work is 90% of spray, spray operations. It's only really 10% spraying. The better you prep, the easier your, your spraying is gonna be. But when you roll, especially when you ain't got floors down or nothing like that, ain't really a whole lot of prep that you need. Just get in there and make it happen. Maybe, maybe cover up some windows, which we have not done. Brand new windows, not covered up at all. That's a smart move, right? So I was trying to get some, uh, some semi-gloss paint for all of our trim and I was looking at home uh, at Lowe's this morning and yo, semi-gloss for five gallons, $200. Going right back to Sherman Williams. Get that shit from them. I also went upstairs and looked to see about anything that needed to be touched up mud wise. Again, this primer is great for helping you see imperfections. And uh, there was only two spots that needed to be addressed, two really little spots upstairs that I gotta hit. So happy to report that. And just happy in general. Even though I can't feel my hand, and I think I've got early stages of arthritis setting in. So what y'all think about paint technique? I think I'm, I think I'm a class A painter amongst class A contractor, so. I think I paint pretty phenomenal, actually. Not bad, Joe. Not bad. So there was a question posed off of yesterday's video. Somebody was talking about my grout and asking if I leave that black grout or that dark grout on that tile, will it discolor the tile? And I think the answer to that is eventually yes. But you got a little bit of, you got a little bit of a time before that's actually gonna set in and take place. And I'm talking maybe like a day or so. Now I wouldn't recommend leaving, leaving a lot of discoloration on those tiles from the, from the wiping the grout, but you're gonna have some, at least when I do it, you will. And also somebody had said, you need to wipe as you go. And I do appreciate that information. However, reading the back of the bag of grout recommended waiting about 15 to 30 minutes before wiping. Can you imagine taking a shit and trying to use that type of logic? Waiting 15 to 30 minutes after you take a shit to wipe your ass? That might leave you with a little bit of swamp ass. Right? But uh, I do appreciate the information in relation to the wipe technique. Again, my justification was following the instructions. I wonder how many comments there will be about cleaning out the room before you paint. Joe, you should get everything out of there to make it easier for you. Well, True as that may be, space is at a limited, or space is limited in here. And that's a big part of why I wanna get this dining room done so bad, so that we can actually use this dining room as our new storage, kind of. We're not gonna have as much stuff in this room as we had in the tool room, because we're getting close to the end so we can start getting shit out of here that we don't need anymore. There was also another comment yesterday that I saw. Somebody said, why are you painting without having the window trim on? And uh, you know, they were adamant about the fact that they had all the sense in the world with that comment and that I was just the biggest idiot for, for doing it this way. At least that's the way it seemed to me. But uh, <clears throat> you know, I think to each their own, 
And to me personally, I think it's a lot cleaner when you do the window trim after the fact. You know, you get that wall paint in there, it ain't as much cutting in. Could be wrong about that. But Joe, you still gotta cut in the trim, right? So, I mean, you're gonna be having to go back and touch up the wall paint after you do the trim. Maybe. It's just the way I like to do things. We all operate at a different speed. My speed is breakneck. And uh, it's just whatever works for you. Joe, why don't you move the paint tray closer to where you're painting? That way you don't have to walk so much. Uh, not sure if you guys know or not, but I'm fat. So what's a couple extra steps? You know? Might actually be good for me. Never know. Tell you what, my hand ain't doing so hot. That shit is tangling big time. I don't know if I've shared with you guys or not. I'm having a lot of pain in my hand. And in fact, just trying to open up the can of paint, I almost wasn't able to do it. My hand was hurting so bad. What if I'm not able to do this type of work much longer? <laughs> that sounds super millennialist. I need to retire at 38. But it does make me realize and be mindful of, you know, people who do this type of work or construction work into their 60s like rabbit. Little pause there for dramatic effect. Yeah, can't imagine his body uh, can handle that so well. Wonder whatever happened to old rabbit. I don't see or hear much. Actually, I don't hear anything about him. Him and I, of course, went out on bad terms. Unfortunately, had to just walk away from that situation. Sadly enough. He was a hell of a worker at, at times. And I don't say that trying to take a shot or anything like that. It's just, you know, the truth. And I think that if he was in a better place, oh man, it would have been awesome to be able to continue to do these flips with him. Jellico as well. Both. Pretty hard workers. And again, in both, in the right frame of mind, could have really done some amazing things. We get sentimental when we paint. All right, uh, short time later, and dining room is primed, minus the ceiling. So we got the walls primed. Yeah, all right, let me put my headgear back on. I wanted to show y'all when I was cutting in, Joe the cut master. Ah, get a little of that right there. And uh, whew, hit that right there with that ladder. Scratch that wall. All right, so Damon, yeah. how many times have we cut, uh, primed this room? Twice this joint's been primed. So getting ready to prime this joint for the third time and uh, hope we see some, uh, we see this blue go away. It probably don't need it no more, right? Maybe, probably go right into the wall color. There she be, that gets rid of it right there. Third time is usually the charm. Hasn't been cut in not one time. It's all right though. Yeah, I think third time's a charm. You can still see it just a little bit, but seems to be going away. All right, so I'm gonna get this room done. And then after I get done with this, I'm going to work on 
Fuck, I don't know. Maybe put that vanity downstairs. Maybe, yeah, probably gonna put that vanity downstairs. That seems to be the ticket. Uh, right now, Damon has finished coat, ceiling painted, that front bedroom right there. He'll be doing that in the bathroom next, upstairs, and also in this room. And then we still got a little bit of ceiling primer that needs to get done. Dining room, back bedroom. But we're getting it. Getting it on a Saturday. Okay, hey, you got any more of them uh, dilemmas available? Who's ready for a little dilemma action? Uh, lessons to be learned, I'm sure, but let's go ahead and address the elephant in the room, so to speak. All right, let's talk downstairs bathroom, and it's not the grout, okay? It's not the grout at all. We'll look at the grout in a moment. But what it is, is bingo. Hey, boy, that vanity, though, Jack. Vanity's in-isk, kind of, right? The issue that we got, though, is uh, an issue that I've had for quite a majority of my life. It's just too big, right? It's a little too big. Now, is this actually gonna work or not? You come in, it's a little tight right here, right? But uh, there's that, boom. You got your drawer right here. And uh, and uh, what else we got? Uh, let's go down, look at the grout a little bit. Hey, boy, Joe, you know a thing or two, don't you? Yeah, man, that shit clean. Well, not really, considering it's a little dirty right now. All right, now all of our plumbing is way over there. Way over there. Now, to be fair, we could move the vanity a little closer to the toilet, but then we've got that switch right there, or that plug, which would be right behind uh, a faucet handle, right? And that can't be good. Joe, what the heck you got going on there? There's no GFCI right there. You ain't got no GFCI in your bathroom? Fun fact, I mean, this really is. Uh, so here is a GFCI, so to speak. Ground fault circuit interrupter. If water, if water were to hit that outlet, it would trip, you know, so you don't blow your house up, right? So I put the ground fault circuit interrupter in there and it don't work. It don't work at all. And I'm like, what the hell? I wire it. I test it with my little tester. I got power coming in. I got my load. I got my whatever the other thing is. Um, it ain't working. So I, re I rewire it two or three times. I change the GFCI. Is it the GFCI that's bad? I wasted like 30 minutes on this before I, it dawned on me. And here's the crazy thing. I actually learned this uh, from Rabbit. So yeah, I learned this from Rabbit. So I go upstairs. I'm like, okay, well, let me reverse engineer the damn GFCI. Let me look at the one that I put in upstairs. And wait a minute, the one upstairs isn't working. And then it dawned on me. The downstairs bathroom and the upstairs bathroom are on the same on the same circuit. So what that means is I don't need a GFCI down here. If water hits that outlet, that breaker upstairs is going to trip. Um, and my house in Dominion was wired like that. Yeah. So Rabbit was the one that told me about that. So what do you think of this? Uh, is it too big? Uh, we can't move it any closer there because of the outlet. I, I thought about even trying to move the outlet over, and I don't know necessarily that that's going to work. I mean, if I'd have thought this through a lot better, I'd have put that fucking outlet right over there. But 
that's where your outlet's at, which is going to be really in the way of a mirror that you're going to try to put right there. Damn, that's a bad spot for that fucking outlet. It's that outlet that fucks everything up. And then there's a, a, a world of plumbing behind that wall right there. So, dilemma. What are we going to do? I thought about taking this vanity, putting this sucker upstairs, putting a fucking pedestal vanity down here. But again, it's that outlet that's in the way. Oh, there ain't enough wire in that wall to move that neither. So, a couple of things to um, share with you. It is what it is, okay? Uh, sometimes you gotta work with what you got. Comparatively speaking, where this bathroom started from, fucking uh, claw foot tub in here, a vanity similar size, but this bathroom is just a, you know, a tad bit tighter now with the tub surround and the new tub in here that's not a claw foot. And, um, you know, when you're trying to dress this thing up and make it look really good, it's not until the end when you start to realize some issues that you're up against, like that outlet right there, um, which is probably going to be too close to the sink. We're going to put the sink in in just a second to see how that fits. Uh, and we can't move this anymore, you know? And then when you look at the plumbing underneath, that's probably an issue too. That's probably ugly. <sighs> so I guess the one lesson to be had from this is, oh, and these are soft shut, ain't that something? Uh, the one lesson to be had from this is don't expect, <laughs> especially if you're well endowed, don't just expect that it's gonna fit, even if it is only standard size. Son of a bitch, what we gonna do about this? Let me put this sink on and see what that does. All right, I hate giving away so many of these goods right now, but you know what I mean by that is, I wish I would just keep it all under wraps until we get it all done, but who knows when we'll get this damn thing done, right? All right, um, mind you, I got this cardboard down too, so we're not trafficking and tracking a bunch of dirt up into here. So good news. I'm starting to mess with the faucet set right here, and look at how small those handles are right there. Beautiful. We went with brushed gold for all the finishes in here, and we're going to swap all this shit out make it all brushed gold, too. So it's going to look super sharp. Brushed gold, which is black, black and gold like the Steelers, sort of. The good news is those, those handles are so small, uh, I could probably put that right up near there. We're a lot closer so that my plumbing under here isn't such a big deal. That would be good. And you know what? Hey, it is what it is. It's just in a bad spot. So we'll move over just a little bit more. But I want to talk about these, um, the stuff that we got from Amazon, first of all. Look, if you're flipping houses, you know, Amazon is a great place to get your finishes. Uh, this is heavy duty right here. This is... Uh, metal some sort of metal. It's heavy. It probably weighs every bit of five pounds and uh, You got your hot and your cold. I'm not exactly sure what side the hot and the cold's on. I think I got that backwards But look at this nice faucet too Fun fact When we did the flip for where can I put y'all when we did the flip for um, well the last flip house uh, The sink that we put in the bathroom was plastic it just looked like it was metal so the, this right here is about I don't know these are probably close to a hundred if not a hundred dollars uh, right around a hundred dollars for these faucet sets which is super cheap when you think about going to Lowe's or Home Depot to try to get one of these you're gonna spend probably two hundred dollars for this so let me get this set up real quick just I hope I got that footage right there. Okay, anyways, we're back up in the bathroom. The GoPro just be doing what it wants to do. So I'm getting ready to uh, put this sink on so that we can figure out where this vanity can actually go. Oh, God, I can't even get up under here. I feel for a plumber coming in here having to do any plumbing work because uh, ain't a lot of room to maneuver, Jack. How are they supposed to get up under there? Ah. Oh boy, that's a tight fit. Damn, it's a tight fit. Damn, it's a tight fit. I guess I can fit, right? I can fit. 
Okay, I think it's hot water's on the left side. That's standard hot water on the left side. Hot on the left, cold on the right. All right, let's look at all this. So what we we're just, all we were trying to do is figure out is this gonna work? And it looks like it will. We can come a little bit more over uh, and that's where that's gonna be at. All right, so let's move it over and see what that gets us. Hey, Damon, help me move this vanity real quick. <clears throat> Don't wanna mess up the floor. Well, we got a little room to come this way. And I wanna get, cause the plumbing's so tight right there. So I just wanna come over just a little bit toward me. So we're gonna go on the other side of that grout line. Um, and be careful, that shouldn't go north. We're gonna go right on the other side of that grout line. So we're gonna go right up to your grout line. Okay. That's what it's gonna be right there. Um, can't even imagine what somebody might have to say about the way that that is. Oh, Joe, that's trash. Well, I, I don't necessarily love that. Oh, and real quick, let's put the backsplash on there and just see what that does. <sighs> careful now, careful, careful, careful. You know what? I think it's going to work. I think it's going to work. Boy, that is going to be sharp as hell right there. All right, well, again, and now with the vanity over a little bit more that way, it's not as tight coming through here, or, I mean, it still kind of is, but it's what we got. It's what we got. All right, what do you think? Let me know. I think we, uh, Handle the dilemma right there. Next is gonna be trim, baseboard and coping <laughs> quarter round. I love it, I love it. Hey, okay, we're back in the bathroom and um, what I'm getting ready to do right now is fix more mistakes of Matt. That's right, folks. I'm getting ready to take that up out of there because that's gotta go so I can do the trim and baseboard around the vanity. And we gotta have the baseboard in so we could do the toilet. Uh, but there were a lot of comments about the comment that I made say, laughing at Matt, saying, what are we gonna do? We're gonna cope the quarter round. And people were you know, saying, oh, Joe, well, that's what you're supposed to do when you don't have even walls. Well, that's a pretty close to a 45 right there. So let's just cut the bullshit. But the more important thing is, is why would you put this quarter round down when we still haven't gotten the baseboard in. You know what I mean? So what are we gonna do? We're gonna cope all that shit out? You, you, you pesky little folks. Now, don't mind me, cause I can't find a freaking pry bar right this second. Sometimes you gotta work with what you got, make what you got work. Ah, oh God, I hate to, hate to put that pressure on this shit, but it's gotta go, right? I mean, why would we, why would this be in here? Oh, God. That is just uh, top quality craftsmanship right there, if you ask me. That is top quality craftsmanship right there. So I'm just trying to ease it in, okay, because there we go. It's got to come off. Uh, I guess we'll leave the baseboard and we'll play the coping game. I've never coped anything, so I uh, guess I'll try to figure out how to do that. There we go. Ease you off ever so gingerly. And gingerly. Nice. Okay. I 
another mistake. Another mistake of Matt right there. All right, let me get my measurement and then we'll figure out how to make this work. All right, two o'clock in the afternoon and I'm a failure at life. So I found the piece of baseboard that Matt was gonna use and I could see where he kind of coped it out right there. And uh, it just, it's not the greatest fit. I guess it'll, I guess it'll work. You know, that's, that's your cope right there. Uh, but my issue has been on this side, trying to get this. Uh, I've cut this easily 20 times. Uh, maybe not 20, but at least, at least almost 10. And uh, still not a good fit, but we'll get it tomorrow. I'm done messing with it. Hey, look, there's the vanity. There's the outlet. Uh, hardware looks really good. Super happy with that. And that's it, man. We got a bunch of painting done. Shout out to Damon. He got a bunch of painting done upstairs. We got this dining room sanded out. We're ready to put the ceiling primer on. We're going to be doing whew, wall color tomorrow. What else we got? Uh, we'll be getting into the kitchen next week. That, save that. Hey, save that party for another day. Um, we're going to be getting ceiling paint on this sitting room. Get that primed. I need to get that measurement. Don't let me forget that. I need to go pick that up today. Go get that tile. Got a sand. Got a sand right here. Get some primer on that. I think that's probably the last of the sanding. Just a wee smidgen of mud work left to do. Spot right there. Spot right there. But we got ceiling paint on this room and pretty much every room up here. The bathroom, boy, that ceiling looks sharp, super sharp. Uh, let me get my glasses. I'm gonna need those. Need that guy up here, because that's where you're gonna be needed at. All right, uh, so ceiling paint in this room. Looks good, ready for wall paint. Nothing done in here. Ceiling paint done in here. Valleys and holidays galore. You can always tell when it's the last room of the day. Primed this room three times. Uh, still got that blue trying to poke through a little bit. You can see just a little bit right there, but it is what it is. Hey, got this hallway ceiling painted. Man, that looks sharp. Looks really good. Ceiling painted in here as well. Ready to put a light fixture in in here. Get wall paint going in here, wall paint going in here. Wall paint going in here. Haven't even primed this ceiling yet. Need to do that. And yeah. So tomorrow will be a good day. Get more paint done. I'll get that baseboard done. I'm going to come up here and cut out some bad spots of flooring that I asked Matt to do and he never did it. Uh, put all the blame on him. Uh, asked him to get this situation rectified. He didn't do that. That's an inch difference right there. All we got to do is just make it right, man. Ain't too hard. Just make it right. Productive day on a Saturday. We got shit done. And man, shout out to that bathroom with that oversized vanity taking up all that space. Boy, as soon as you open that door, boom, vanity right there. All right, that's it, folks. Thanks for rocking with us on a Saturday and look forward to working with you again tomorrow because there ain't no days off. No days off. Have a great one. I'll talk with you tomorrow.